Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith, were recognized by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, if you are able, I encourage you to join me as we bow or kneel before our Creator and Redeemer and join in the confession this, this evening. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother and father conceived. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Merge me with wisdom, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than the snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and lie.
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take us Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. And I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to offer a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. When you have completed your confession and wish to receive the mark of ashes, you are welcome to come forward. Friends, in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we all have peace. Let us sing together, come and fill our hearts with your peace. Well, I have to say that among my pastor friends, there has been considerable joking about the fact that Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day happen to be the same day this year. Love and repentance, two themes that go great together, right? Now, actually, I have to say, I don't know how many weddings I've attended uh, where the best man makes some crack about the groom only wearing a black suit for two occasions, his wedding and his funeral. Ha, 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 ha. The bride hates that joke. And there are plenty of other jokes about love and regret. Um, Take one married couple I know of, Oli and Lena. Oli was getting ready to go to work one day when Lena stopped stopped him and complained, 
Oli, the washing machine is broke down, don't you know, and I want you to fix it. And Oli stomped out the door yelling, Lena, what do I look like, the Maytag man? And that evening, Oli got home, Lena was standing in the yard and said, Oli, the car won't start. Please, Oli, fix the car. And Oli stomped into the house yelling, Lena, what do I look like, Mr. Goodrich? Well, the next day when Oli came home from work, Lena said, Look, Oli, the car, it's fixed. And the washing machine, it's working too. Lars down the road came by and I asked if he would fix it for me. Yeah, and what did he charge you for doing it? Oli asked. Lena said, well, Oli, he said he'd do it for a kiss or if I baked him a cake. Well, what kind of cake did you bake for him, said Oli. Lena replied, what do I look like, Betty Crocker? <laughs> yeah, those were a pair who might have forgotten some of the aspects of marriage. You know, there's a reason for this. When two people choose to get married, they give up their freedom. Suddenly, two individuals share one checkbook, one menu, one social calendar. Couples willingly enter into this bondage with each other. They give up their freedom. They chain their lives together because of love. But then as newlyweds struggle to blend two different lifestyles and learn to live with each other, sometimes it's a short step from I do to what have I done? Oh, When he wants to spend money on a rifle and she wants to spend it on shoes and instead they have to spend it getting the baby's room ready, yeah, there's some regret there. And sometimes over the years that old selfishness begins to creep back in and husbands and wives make choices that exclude the other. They lose patience, they get snippy, they have disagreements and arguments. I'm only telling you what I've heard of. I haven't experienced any of this. They do things they aren't proud of. Maybe they don't break the bonds of love, but they sure stretch those chains to the limit. And yes, there's some regret there, too. In Ephesians 5, the Apostle Paul describes the relationship between Christ and the church as being like the ideal marriage between a husband and wife. Both are utterly in love with the other, and both are making sacrifices for the other. But if marriage is sometimes strained, we shouldn't be too surprised that our relationship with God is also strained, and for the same reasons. What God loving, when, uh, when God lovingly says, don't, we immediately want to do. And if God says, do, we immediately don't want to do it. Even though the limits put upon us by our relationship with God are good and healthy and generous and loving, That old devil inside pushes us to break out and cut loose and be contrary. We sin, and love has to make room for regret. When we break God's heart, it breaks our heart. Now, maybe you found from personal experience that when you betray somebody you love, making up is not simple. You can't just buy your way out of trouble with a box of chocolates. Again, I don't speak from experience. This is kind of what Psalm 51, which is generally attributed to King David when he was in the doghouse, tells us. Now, you probably remember David. He was once God's golden boy. He was the faithful servant and the king who could do no wrong until he did everything wrong. He slept with another man's wife. He conspired to have her husband killed in order to cover up the affair. And David managed to convince himself his misdeeds were okay. He even managed to fool his friends but God knew. God knew David's heart and God knew David's dark deeds. And when God confronted David, David's regret was so deep because his love for God had been so high. Psalm 51 gives voice to David's remorse. Eugene Peterson's paraphrase in the message is powerful. I know how bad I've been. My sins are staring me down. You, God, are the one I violated and you've seen it all seen the full extent of my evil. I've been out of step with you for a long time. David knows it won't be easy to make things right with God. A box of chocolates won't make up for a life of misdeeds. David concludes Psalm 51 saying, You, O God, have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give you a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. Acting like we're Christians doesn't cut it. Without true love in our hearts, everything we do is just a noisy, clashing gong. 
Going through the motions doesn't please you. A flawless heart performance is nothing to you. David writes, I learned God worship when my heart and pride was shattered. Heart shattered lives ready for love don't for a moment escape God's notice. And this marks the real difference between Valentine's Day and Ash Wednesday. Valentine's Day is a single day for expressing superficial love. A pretty card, a bouquet of flowers, a nice dinner, and then tomorrow it's back to the same old, same old. One burnt offering does not cover a life of sin. But Ash Wednesday is about true repentance. Ash Wednesday is the day when we stare into the mirror and we realize just how long and how far we have fallen from our divine partner. We know the love of Jesus Christ is constant. God has not strayed away from us. It's us who've turned our backs and walked away from God. On Ash Wednesday, we recognize that we've burned down our own houses. The taste of regret is like ashes in our mouth. Ash Wednesday is not like Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is the one day you make goo-goo eyes and then you go back to your selfish ways. Ash Wednesday is about true repentance. Ash Wednesday is about turning away from the dark and broken path that we've chosen for ourselves. Ash Wednesday is about turning our eyes back to the light of Christ and the love of Christ and making real changes in our lives and walking the long road of Lent toward Easter. Easter is the day we celebrate Jesus, who gave everything for us, who gives everything for us. Jesus is the faithful lover who will forgive us if we repent and return. God will not overlook our broken hearts. God will heal our hearts and give us hearts for Christ alone. It's more than 40 days' journey from here to there, from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday, from repentance to redemption. So it's a good time to start walking. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves his love for us. As Christ's forgiven and reconciled people, let us extend signs of peace to each other. Please stand and share the peace of Christ with one another. As you return to your seats, we will ask the ushers to come around to collect our offering this evening.
As we prepare for communion, I want to extend an invitation to those who might be guests here tonight. In the Methodist tradition, you are welcome to receive communion. You don't need to be a member of this church or a Methodist. Uh, this is the grace of God. This is the table of Jesus Christ, and you are invited. Uh, we'll receive communion in two ways tonight, and you can choose either side. Um, if you come up on this side, communion will be by intinction. So hold your hands out. We'll give you a piece of bread, and you can dip that in the common cup and receive both elements together. If you come on the other side, then you'll receive a piece of bread, and you can take one of the small cups of juice um, to receive communion. And I believe there's a bowl over there to return the cups. If you need gluten-free bread, that is on a uh, pedestal in the middle, and just help yourself when you come forward. I encourage you to follow along with us. We're using the uh, full great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Look, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life and presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast 
at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as God's forgiven and reconciled people, let's join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to ask our communion servers to come forward. Grand earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice And the seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken in my regard And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you and through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well with me. And far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you and through it all, through it all, it is well, Lord. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well, it is well. So let go, my soul, and trust in Him. The waves and winds still know. His name So let go my soul And trust in Him The waves and winds still know His name It is well
and we be found faithful to follow. May the Spirit drive us into the wilderness, burning away the chaff of our lives and purifying our hearts for all to see and be blessed. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mercy, master, and fire, be with us and remain with us always. Amen. May God, who has forgiven and fed us, now make us strong. Go in peace to love and serve God and your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Amen.